Um, I believe um, that the church, the body of Christ, um, must lead the way in the healing of black and white America. If you can turn me down just a little bit. We must confront the spirit of division in a healthy and progressive way. Demonstrating, can you say demonstrating? demonstrating. Come on, say it again. Demonstrating. demonstrating love, listen at this, on the level that we exist. Meaning respect and humility and consideration and catch this, intelligence. There must be an intelligent response to evil. Yes, there's a spiritual response, but there must also be an intelligent response. I think we have been hindered in this because of how we think, how we view ourselves, and how we view others. I believe our hearts that desire to progress in the healing of black and white America has been hijacked in some ways by politics. You can't integrate and discriminate at the same time and call it justice. It's not justice at all. And so we want to talk around these things. This is a, um, I'm trying to close out or bring it in at least on Sundays for this particular teaching. Um, but I believe the root of the dilemma of race, and I use the word race loosely, um, is we all have and we all experience anxiety and bias and judgment, but here is what we all crave. We all crave and desire to be understood and to be valued. I need you to hear me. Not, there's not one person under the sound of my voice that doesn't want to be valued, understood, embraced, loved, considered, want to be a part of, Everybody does, man, woman, old, young, boy, girl. And I have a perspective around this whole idea. You have perspectives. And here's what humility says, that sometimes our perspective, it may be wrong. Y'all can say amen right there. Because the more people you have, people equal perspectives. The more people you have, the more perspectives you have the more opinions you have. We all see things different. We understand things different. We, we see things, hear things, understand things through our experience. And our experiences are totally different. Some people under the sound of my voice, even in our church, grew up through the Jim Crow days. Some of us did not. Some of us experienced um, what we call racism on a whole nother level than what some of us have even seen in our time today. So there's different perspectives. There's perspectives with our white brothers and there's perspectives with our black brothers and we gotta understand humility is what we need to begin to heal America. But you gotta look at this truth. We gotta look at this truth. Let's do a little bit of work here. I don't have much time. We gotta look at this truth. That the idea of race is a historical lie. You're taking notes, put it down. I just lost half the room. Race is not in any way biblical or a Christian concept. Race is an invention. It was invented. It was a white invention. Research shows that our 19th and 20th century ideas and beliefs about race didn't even exist in the 17th century. Race originated as a folk idea and ideology among or about human differences. It was a social invention. Historians have even documented when and how race as an ideology came into our culture and our consciousness. Race is a product of a colonial system of suppression, oppression, and control. It's a Western concept. It's imperialistic. What does that mean? Imperialism. It's a policy or ideology of extending rule over people, groups, and countries with the purpose of extending 
political and economic access, power and control. It was invented. We got to talk about this. We got to tell the truth in this regard. So race, as we know, is not a matter of truth, but an invention that has affected the entire globe. We read this in the first part of this series. Quote from Thomas Jefferson. We hold these truths to be self-evident. And self-evident things should be self-evident. Shouldn't need any help. It should be clear that all men are created equal. That was a great idea. Great concept. But the practicing of it has been evil. That all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the right to inhale and exhale, to do so freely as their mind desire, to create labor and to enjoy the prosperity from that labor. And you cannot write this. You cannot pin this and then enslave another man with good Christian conscience unless you have reduced that man to be another race or another species other than you. So we see in history, in studying, that the reducing of black men, black people, black women to property and three-fifths of a human being thus creating another race. It was invented. It was told that five slaves equal three people. It was economic. All so we can keep our good Christian conscience because these men were supposedly born again, spirit-filled men. And the whole idea of race so I don't buy it anymore, was to dehumanize non-white people in America. Dehumanization, the process of depriving a person or group of positive human qualities. So if I can reduce you to less of a human or create race that you are a different race than me, then I can feel justified in what I do to you because you're not human, you're not my species, you're not my race. It was an economic invention. It was an economically efficient system of production. Are you listening to me? And it wasn't Christianity at all. It wasn't. I said it wasn't Christianity at all. So drop the idea that I am not a Christian because a Christian is a white man's religion. It is not. There is nothing more important for all people than faith in God through Jesus Christ. I don't care what color you are. So drop that idea. Drop it. Drop it. Because what they did was not Christian at all. Are you listening to me? Go to Acts chapter 17. Where you get this from? I can read. Look at Acts chapter number 17. Real Christian men got a hold of this verse. Verse 24. And I taught this a long time ago, but I didn't have this revelation I'm teaching today. God, verse 24, that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And verse number 26, and had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Look back at the top of 26. And had made up how much blood? How many bloods? One. All nations. This nation is ethnic, ethnicity, people groups. So from one blood, he made all people. They're different, but they're the same. 
When did we make it different races? From one blood, he made all nations, all humans. So there is one race that is human. Now there's distinctions and differences and diversities, different colors, but there's one race. This whole invention, this whole lie that has kept division in our world, we got to stop it. We got to address it. And some of y'all may not agree. But I've looked this up. I've sat around this. I've, I've, I've been here before, just not to this extent. But, but if you can read, had made of one blood, come on, somebody say it, all, all people groups from one blood, from one man. He made all nations, all ethnicities, all people groups, not different races. Y'all quiet up in here. One blood equals one species of being. Species, look at what it means. Look at what it means. Species means a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding. One blood, one species. So blood determines race, not color. Only mankind has bought this lie. That different color means different race. Any dog lovers in the room? Raise your hand. Anybody got a dog in the room? Okay. Um, dog is a species as well. Am I correct? Um, raise your hand. You got a dog again. It's cold in here. It was hot when y'all was jumping. Now you ain't jumping. Now it's cold. Let's do something about it. Okay. Dog lovers, raise your hand. Okay, what kind of dog you got? Yes? You got a pit bull. Okay, who else got a dog? You got a dog? Okay, what kind of dog you got? A, a, a Rayshon? A Bichon. I thought he said a Rayshon. A, a Bichon? I never heard of that. So we got a pit bull. We got a Bichon. What you got? A French bulldog. Okay, what you, what you got? Cam, what you got? A pointer pit mix and a moo, a poodle. So we got a pointer pit mix, a poodle. We got a Rayshon. We got a, a pit bull. We got a, a French bulldog. Way in the back, little sweetie, what kind of dog you got? Now, I can't say that because I cussed. She said... Uh, that. So they got that. And then we got a B, a Bichon, a French pit bull. French, French pull. So, no, I'm trying to prove a point. You got a shit zoo. You got a, what he said. You got a pit bull. You got a French bulldog. Kim got a poodle. Who else got something different than that? Way in the balcony. A Maltese. What you got here, young man? You got a pit mixed with a Sharpie? A Sharpie, okay. What you got? A corky. Corky. Yeah. That's a lot of dogs. A lot of different dogs. They're different sizes. They're different colors. They bark different. They look different. They react different. Some you can train different than others. Some are quiet. Some are loud. But they're all dogs. One species. One. And you wouldn't think none different. 
when you ran into her dog, you would say, what race is your dog? Now, yes, there are differences. I'm not, there are. There should be. They're supposed to be. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to look different. We're supposed to bring different things to the table. But there is one race. My brother is here. Pastor Greg, he's from South Africa, right? He's a white brother. He's my brother. We're the same race. Okay, y'all. We're human. There are differences. But somewhere this was invented and the lie was sold and we bought it and we built race and it's still traveling through the fabrics of our world right now and it is a problem. And we got to heal it. We got to fix it. We got to address it. But I'm just giving you truth. That's what you want, right? One. Well, how do you say that, Reverend? Because I can read. Go back to the scripture. Go back to Acts. I didn't make this up. I was reading this and I said, oh my God. Acts 26, and had made of one blood all nations. One blood One race, human race. So ethnicity is the difference. It's the distinction. It's the division. It's the diversity, not race. And Jesus is a reconciler of discord, prejudice, hatred, the divisions among the people groups, the unhealthy divisions, the things that are causing havoc in our worlds. He's a reconciler, and he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. So the church has a part to play in the healing of America. I'm not telling you to be walked on. I'm not telling you not to deal with facts. I'm not telling you that. But we got to deal with truth. That's why it's called detox, because we've been told one thing, and we just buy it. But what is the real deal? Behind this is now this major spirit of division. But it was originally invented, and it was very economical. I don't have time to go through that, but I want to sit on a Wednesday and walk you through it, because some of y'all don't even know. This thing is bigger than you think. It's bigger than they didn't let you in the school because you were black or whatever. It's bigger than that even. You got to trace this back. We don't study history enough. We don't study origin enough. We don't study context enough. We, we good on, that, that's what they said. I heard, they told me, that you see that, that, that and just because it's on TV don't mean it's right. Just because you saw it on Facebook don't mean it's right. Well, it's got to be right, it's on the internet. No. I've read some things on Wikipedia that are wrong. Like, that ain't even right. And that's your source? It's our calling as a church to be active and moving toward in this resolution. I gave you some things. I'll give you those real quick again. And I'm out of time already. I believe the healing begins when white America acknowledged that American slavery was a wicked and deplorable sin. We talked about these things, remember? Remember? Um, We're going to have another town town hall meeting on Wednesday night. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tune in to those, because some of y'all have been calling and asking me questions, but you don't tune in to the service. I'm not answering your questions. Tune in to the service. The town hall was for that, for us to sit and listen and learn from different perspectives. We're going to have different people sitting up here this time, and we're going to talk about these, 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 these matters, I believe, of the heart and of division. Um... I believe healing begins when, too, we said, admit that the effects of slavery are still present in America. When we confront, when white people confront their negative perception of black people. Um, I believe it begins when white America intentionally and consistently build dialogue and when white America eliminates the N-word. We went through that, remember? And then we have, I believe healing begins when black America throw out the victim mentality. 
don't mind the babies. They're in service with us today as we close out Black History Month. So don't, don't, don't trip on them. Babies going to be babies. Say amen. amen. Um, when they throw out the victim mentality, um, don't, don't expect babies to sit still doing church. You don't even sit still do church. <laughs> you pick your nails and play with your hair and check Facebook. You go pee four times. You... Um, I believe healing begins in black America. Don't become they. We talked about that. Um, that we don't embrace um, the bigotry and prejudice and discrimination that we don't want ourselves. Um, when we don't play number three into the propaganda, I said it begins also number four when we anticipate racism, meaning we anticipate that in the earth, people will always not like us due to our color. And that's anybody. Um, but respond in a way that reflects the change you want to see. This is when the intelligence comes in. Anticipate it. I'm, I, I didn't say be paranoid, I said anticipate it. So when something happens, you're not thrown off like, oh my God, there's racism in America? Anticipate it. Anticipate it and already have your response. Number five, choose love and peace. It was King that says, I have decided to stick with love because hate is too great a burden to bear. And then number six, I believe healing begins when black America also eliminates the N-word. Now, there's a difference of opinion with a lot of what I'm teaching. And, and, and I get it. It's okay. You, you, you get to have your opinion. You get to um, have your perspective. And I get to have mine. And this is what I believe we need to do. And some people say, we don't need to limit the N word. We can use it. It belongs to us. I think we should stop saying it. You don't have to agree. I think we all, white and black America, should stop using the word. Amen. Amen. I believe the word has blood on it. The word has murder on it. The word has um, years of, of mistreatment and, and evil on it. And we should stop using it. Spirit of division must be confronted with truth. We must go beyond the race lie and deal with the truth that we are one race, the human race. Yes, we have differences that wasn't intended to divide us. Hear what I just said? We have differences, but they were not intended to divide us. The, the problem with our world is there's, no, there's a lack of humility, which means when you disagree, I think because we disagree, now I get to dishonor and disrespect. You can disagree without dishonoring me and disrespecting me. Who I am, how I'm hardwired, my history, my individuality is very important. And I, I, I believe we are moving in the right direction when men are no longer judged by color or by the lie of race on both sides of the court. Because there's sometimes I have this apprehension when it comes to certain white people. And it's mainly because they've given me receipts. I have receipts of how they've treated, what they've said in their presence. So I'm kind of, kind of, I'm kind of like, I don't know. And I believe when we get to a point where men are no longer judged by color or by the lie of race, we're moving in the right direction. When there's no underrepresentation or overrepresentation in society, you will always have rich and poor, but poor shouldn't be associated with black. And rich shouldn't be associated with white. And prison shouldn't be associated more with black and brown. When there is no more underrepresentation or overrepresentation in society, we're moving in the right direction. And here is why the church must be strategic in praying, because you can't march these things out. There was a grace on a, and there was a time when marching did some things in our world. I, I think I think we got to be strategic on what God wants now. And I believe we have um, something that's precious that we don't use enough, and that is prayer. 
Because prayer causes the hearts of men to change. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he turns it however he wants to turn it. So you can do more in prayer than you can do marching and pumping your fists and yelling and screaming and responding in a way that's not intelligent. If you go and you pray and ask God for directives on what to pray, you're not going to heal the world, but you're going to do your part in your world. You're going to capture your influence uh, in your region and your school and your block and your church and your kids' team. That's your world. And if you do your part in your world, We'll be on our way to the healing of black and white America. And you know what I'm saying is true because all of us sitting here, you may have apprehensions about some white people. Whites may have some about black people, but we do have black and white friends and co-workers that we love. So we're not saying throw all blacks away and throw all whites away, but there, there is a number on both sides of the fence that can take some healing of heart. So we can all live better. And if you have the mindset that it ain't us, it's all of them, or it ain't them, it's all of us, then you are mistaken. You lack humility. You lack understanding. You lack truth. And truth, listen, this is what I learned, Chris. Truth, you got to dig for it. It ain't usually just out there for you to take. It's not a buffet. Let me give me two strawberries true truths. No, no, no. You got to dig for it because most truth is hidden. They don't want you to know it. So you got to read. You got to study. You got to read more than your Bible. Yeah, I said it. I just read the scripture. Well, you're going to be missing something. Because some things that I've read have helped me direct my prayers because I didn't know it. I just read the scripture and I pray eight times a day and I fast on Mondays and bless God for you. God has called me to more. He has called me to even go through the scripture now and see what's going on in there from the beginning to the end. Oh, y'all not ready for that. Okay. We are moving in the direction of real solutions and healing when our laws are in harmony with our values. Law is not the foundation of democracy. Goodwill and humility is the foundation of democracy because goodwill and humility lead to equitable laws that are equitably, equitably applied. An unjust law is not a law. So when our laws are in harmony with our values and we stop seeing same crime, two different sentences. Are you listening to me? I mean, you can, you can send your kids in some places to a school outside of district and get 17 years of prison and you can shoot and kill somebody and go home. An un unjust law is not a law. Citizens of goodwill make laws that are fair and will be moving in the right direction. I know we're moving toward real healing and solution. Come on, guys, y'all, come on, come on, music. When love and peace are commonplace. When love and peace are commonplace. Are y'all still here? Yes. I said, are you still here? Yes. Now, I don't want you to get too relaxed when I'm teaching these messages because you were just running around. You were jumping and screaming. This is the truth of the word of God. And it's a detox series, which means the whole series is going to challenge us. It's going to challenge what we thought we knew. It's going to challenge strongholds we've held on to. But it's good. Tell your neighbor, say it's good. I believe, and I can't unpack all this on Sunday mornings, and I want to get starting in March to the next part of this series, but we're not going to leave the series um, during the week. We're going to add it to our community talk platform because I want to get us to a place of understanding that we didn't have before. 
Some of you got to go home and deal with what I just said even about the race because you don't, you don't agree. I don't agree as one race. I didn't, I didn't make it up. I got it from the scripture. Human. Human. Major differences, just like your dogs. You go outside right now, you'll see a ton of birds, different kinds, different colors. But they're all birds. Only mankind has bought the lie that we're different races to keep us divided and keep us fighting. Yes, you are black, but you have the human race. And I need you to be black. I need you to eat greens and cornbread. And I need you to, I need you to dress high. I, I need your culture. I need you to stay the way you are. But there's one race. We went to Jesus, we went to Mexico. They are Latino, right? I need them to be that. They have a culture. We love it. I don't need them to be black. I need them to be Mexican. We had great food there and they do things different than us. But it's great. We enjoyed it. But it's still one race. They're human. On the human level, we're all the same. That's what the enemy don't want you to know. So when you approach people, we get into this, I'm this, you're that, I'm inferior, you're not. No, on the human level, we're all the same. Created equal. You have, you have the same right to the pursuit of happiness as somebody that lives in an $18 million house. You have the same right to make a living and enjoy the fruit of your living as someone who's making lots of money or own companies. You have the same right. Because on a human level, we're all the same. And before we were in our mother's womb, God knew us. That ain't just for believers. That ain't just for black people. That ain't just for Pentecostals or, or Baptists. Before we were all in our mother's womb, he knew us and ordained destiny for us, carved it out. Now we got to just walk it out. Some of us have left what he knew about us all along and we're doing other things. That's why he's given those believers the ministry of reconciliation, saying, come back to God and his will for you so we can live the life that he intended because sometimes living life with Christ gets hard. So I can imagine living without him. You may look good on the outside. I, I saw a thing with Mike Tyson yesterday and I'm done. And he says, people think, they tell him, man, having a lot of money, must be the greatest thing in the world and it makes you feel like you're on cloud nine. And his response was, it's obvious you never had a lot of money. Because all those things that you think you need to be happy, now don't get me wrong. You give me a million, I'm gonna take it, Jason. But I can be happy at 30,000 a year, I can be happy in a two-bedroom apartment, I can be happy and be content. Come on here. One race. The human race. Let that, sit with that this week if you don't agree. Let, let, let the Spirit of God behind my voice minister to you. Because I don't want to be a part of the division. I want to be a part of the healing. The healing. It was at a church yesterday. We did a conference and majority, you know, whites and Hispanic. And one of the guys hollered out, the white guy hollered out, what's up, cuz? And he was correct. Because we're family. Ain't none of my cousin, he white. Ain't none of my cousin, he my brother. And I understand some of y'all is hard to hear because you have different scars than I have. You, you, you have a different experience. You're like, I hear what you're saying, Reverend, but you wasn't there. 
when I was picking cotton and this happened to my mama and my grandmother and this, I get it. But there is a healing that belongs to all of us. What you're dealing with, Pastor, with your son's school, there ain't nothing compared to what I dealt with, and I, I agree. We all have different experiences, but we need the same healing that come from the same Jesus. Ooh-wee. Did you receive something today?